Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be making hamburgers, so I'm going to be making some hamburger buns. Because I don't buy any of my breads at the store anymore. I make everything myself, hot dog buns, hamburger buns, anything like that. Of course we almost never have hot dogs anyway, but hamburgers we do have on occasion. And so I'm going to be using my basic bread recipe, yeast bread recipe, but with a few changes because this is going to be the one that I include my zucchini powder. So the zucchini powder is made from zucchini I grew in my own garden, getting lots and lots of zucchini. You can see I have still more over here to deal with. And I cut it up, I've been cutting it up into small little pieces and dehydrating it so it looks like this. And then when I'm ready to use it as a powder or when I just want to get a bunch made up, what I do is I put it in my Mr. Coffee coffee grinder. I actually have two of these now so I can have one dedicated just for grinding coffee. Though I do have a hand, uh, an off-grid one. I do. I also have an electric one. And then the one, this is my brand new one I got just for doing stuff like, like this, you know, grinding up. Uh, beets and zucchini and uh, red cabbage and to making into a powder. So right now I have my rainwater heating up on the wood stove because I got to get it to the right temperatures for my bread. So when that's all ready to go, I'll come back in here and I'll show you my recipe and how we're going to put this together. Okay, so my, my water is, is warm enough. I've got it at 120 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to put in my bowl is just one cup of organic this is just plain white flour, unbleached. You want to make sure it's unbleached. And that's all I'm going to use of the white flour in this. And then I'm going to take my dry yeast. I buy it in bulk and then I, I jar it up like this and then keep it in the free. I seal it, but whenever I open a jar, a little half pint, I keep it in the freezer. So I'm putting about a tablespoon of the dry yeast in there. I'm going to put one teaspoon of the salt. There we go, one teaspoon of salt. To make sure it's not, it's an unrefined salt, not your pure white salt. You want a good, like a Redmond Real Salt is my favorite, or a pink Himalayan salt. And whoop, I don't want to put that in yet. Plus about a tablespoon of butter. And I like to put about a tablespoon of sugar because I believe sugar helps the ferment process in the bread to give it a better rise. You don't need very much, and as it ferments, it's going to help digest some of that sugar. So let's stir that in there, those dry ingredients and the butter in there. And now I'm going to pour my warm water in there, stir that in there, and just leave it, and then let it, let it do its thing. You want it to get good and bubbly. Now if you're going to, usually I like to add seeds to my bread. Um, I haven't been doing that when I use the zucchini powder, powder just because I don't want it to get too heavy. But if you're going to use seed, especially something like flax seed, now is a good time to put it in so that it can soak. Especially if you're using whole seeds because that's what I like to do. So I'll be back when this is ready for the rest of the ingredients. Alright, now that it's all nice and bubbly and foamed up, um, I'm going to go ahead at this point and add a half cup of my zucchini powder. Now this is, now somebody mentioned in one of my other videos where I talked about the zucchini powder, they thought it looked white, so they assumed I peeled mine. No, I don't peel it. If you look closely, you can see it's actually green. Uh, and it will turn your bread just a little bit green. So anyway, a half cup, mix it in there really good. And then the other little thing I started doing, I actually got this idea from Gudrun is taking the homemade fermentation starter, whichever one you have, and putting in about a tablespoon or so. I just kind of pour it in there. I don't measure. And that, especially when you're working with heavier ingredients like whole wheat flour, adding the zucchini powder, adding seeds, that's going to help give your bread a better, more fluffy rise. And now for the rest of my flour, I'll be using 100% organic, home milled uh, whole white wheat flour. The white wheat is my favorite. This is hard white wheat. Actually, no, this is, uh, let me take that back. This is a combination of spelt flour, hard white wheat, and soft white wheat. I find it makes, the combination makes a really good, um, just a good all-purpose flour. Okay, I'm going to mix this in really good. And you can see I'm using my little 
bread whisk that I got from Mary. I never even knew there was such thing as a bread whisk before. And I usually just use a wooden spoon, but it's I really like the way this works. So anyway, I'm just going to keep adding that in there until it gets to the point that I'm ready to knead it. And that's getting thick enough. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this onto my counter. And then you're going to knead it for, you know, typically if you look in recipe books, they'll say about 10 minutes. It really depends on your kneading style. I can actually get my bread well kneaded in just a few minutes. And I just, I don't do it just one way. I kind of, I tend to do the fold and squish method. But I also like to do this. There's so many different ways you can you can uh, knead your bread, and I just kind of do whatever feels right at the moment. So anyway, just keep adding your flour as is needed, and kneading your bread until it is smooth and elastic, and it's no longer sticky like that. Okay, so I'll keep doing this until I got it a good texture. You can see another way I just like to do this is I just kind of roll it and push it like this. Sometimes it just depends how I'm how I'm kneading it is going to depend on how thick it is at the time. Another way I like to knead it is to do that. Okay, so I've got my bread dough all ready to rise, and I was hoping I zoomed in real close because I'm hoping you can see the little green flecks in here. So you can tell, you know, once it's in here like that, you can definitely see the green and that. Uh, I didn't peel that zucchini. I forgot to hit record earlier, but what I did was I took my glass bowl that I mixed the bread in, washed it out, dried it real good, took about a teaspoon of butter, spread it around in there, and then greased up the top surface of the, of the bread dough so that it doesn't dry out while it's rising. And notice that I do prefer using glass whenever I'm making bread, and I like to use butter, but you can use coconut oil, olive oil, or avocado oil to uh, grease your bowl and your bread and again that's just to keep it from it keeps the it from sticking to the bowl as it's rising and also keeps it from drying out on top and then just throw a towel over it and then set it in a warm place the sun's actually shining today I could go set it in the sun but I think I'll just set it right next to my wood stove the towel will keep dust and all that off of it bugs and whatnot and so I'll be back once it's ready for the next step all right, now once your dough has doubled in size, which is going to take roughly about an hour, you want to take it, you're going to punch it down, and this is, you're going to notice, especially if you're using uh, mostly whole wheat flour like I did, it's going to be heavier than just your plain white flour bread. Anyway, I will knead my bread just a little bit and to push it out to get it to about the thickness I want it. Now what I find is a good size for cutting out hamburger buns is a wide mouth canning lid and that that gives about a good width and so you want to press your bread out so that's your dough out so it's maybe about an inch thick and then just use your canning lid it works great because it's already you know open so that's going to make it work better for you and then I'm going to place these on my stoneware baking pan and I have linked to this below I should get at least four I want to cut out four because I'm thinking two dinners and then the rest whatever's left over I can make a, a couple of rolls or some little breadsticks out of okay so then once you have your hamburger buns cut out or you could make you could get two more hamburger buns out of this. Actually, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll make two more hamburger buns and we can either eat them as rolls or maybe I can freeze them and put them away for another time. So you got to kind of knead it out a little bit again when you do that. Okay, there's five. And your last one, well, you can just shape it like so instead of cutting it. You gotta keep in mind that these are gonna spread out and rise as they sit. So now, if you want some sesame seeds, 
Now's a good, good time to do that. You can brush a little water or a little egg on there to make sure they stick. Me, I just sprinkle them on top and then press them in a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to cover and put it back next to the wood stove and let them rise for another half hour to 45 minutes. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just finish this video out with pictures because I need to get my camera and my lights put away so I can finish out my day and the other things I have to do. And so what you want to do is after you let your hamburger buns rise, you know, it's going to be a half hour, 45 minutes. You'll know when they're about ready. Then go ahead and stick them in your preheated oven at 400 degrees and you're going to bake for about 20 minutes or so. Just keep an eye on them. When they get big and fluffy and lightly browned on top, you'll know that they're done. And then you're going to take them and you're just going to take a good sharp bread knife and cut them in half this way and then you're ready to go with your hamburger buns. Now a few things I wanted to go over, some new things I, I'm doing is that um, the, the organic white flour I'm using these days now is the King Arthur flour. Now I don't buy just single bags like this. I actually buy in bulk where I get six of them of, what size is this? Six five pound bags on Amazon through the subscribe and save program. This is organic and non-GMO, all that great stuff, unbleached. And I'm really happy with that flour. So I wanted to show you what the, one of the bags looks like. And then I keep, um, I keep it in a coconut oil bucket in here so it's, you know, it's a little bit easier. I just fill it up when I need to. Some other things I, uh, for a thermometer, I found this to be the best thermometer ever. It doesn't, I'm always dropping things and breaking things and I can get this in a set of two. I'll go ahead and link to this below because I always seem to need two thermometers. And it's very sturdy, it even has a stand on the bottom and a good heavy duty clip, unlike the cheap glass ones I was always buying. And then the, the grinder that I use to grind up the zucchini into powder, I'll also link to that below. And the wheat berries, where I get my wheat berries, the hard white wheat I get from Honeyville. Uh, that's the only place I can find the organic ones for a good price in the hard white wheat. It's, it's for some reason harder to find those. But on Amazon, uh, the Great River Milling, they have our good organic grains. And I get the spelt berries through them and the soft white wheat berries. And I will go ahead and link to those below as well. Now, as to the zucchini powder, some other things you can do, like when I'm making uh, tortillas, it just, the amount that I use is just going to vary depend on how much I'm making. The most I use is a half cup, and that is when I'm making this batch of bread. And then, like when I'm doing tortillas, I'll do maybe a quarter to a third cup of the flour in the tortillas. Same thing when I'm making pancakes. Usually do a quarter cup because I'm usually only making a few pancakes because mostly just Mr. Rain is eating breakfast. And so I'll do about a quarter cup in there and it makes the pancakes just soft and yummy and just really good. Plus it's a way you can use up your zucchini and get a little bit more nutrition into your bread so it's a partial flour replacement. It's not gluten free. It's just a partial flour replacement and just a way to add more goodness to your bread. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.